Pranavi is an incoming neurobiology and physiology, physiology and behavior major at UC Davis. And she's planning on a career in medicine, either as a physician or an assistant or a doctor. And in her free time, she loves to paint, binging shows like Money Heist and I can't say that, something Greek. Okay. <laughs> and advocating for social equality. So without further ado, here's Pranavi. Okay, take it away. Hi everyone, thank you guys so much for coming. My name is Pranavi. Today I'll be talking about kind of my journey through high school and the college application process. Um, You can go to the next slide, yeah. So a little bit about me. Um, I, am a, I was a senior at MHS this year, and I will be um, a neurobiology, physiology, and behavior major at UC Davis this fall, and I am considering a minor in psychology. Um, I'm super artistic. I love painting, drawing, like literally anything creative, and I'm really passionate about social issues, and I'm a Hufflepuff. So before we get started, I just want to talk to you guys about some general information about college apps, just in case um, you didn't know. Um, could you go to the slide before this one, please? Yeah, so there's, um, I did three um, applications. So the first one was the UC application. This is the application that you use to apply to the nine UC campuses. So there's four essays, um, you, there's eight prompts that you can choose from and, you, and you're required to do four of them. And there's also an award slash activity section you have to fill out. There is a CSU application and this doesn't require any essays, it's just statistics. So the grades you earned in your classes, um, your SAT score, stuff like that. And the CSU is for like um, schools like San Jose State, San Francisco State, Cal Poly Slow, schools like that. And then the last one is the common application, which is something that almost all of the private schools in America use. For the common application, there is one main essay. There are seven prompts and you have to choose one of them to finish. And um, the private schools can actually give you supplemental essays. So these are smaller essays that are unique to each private school. So some schools may give you two prompts, some schools may give you four prompts. Um, it's up to them. And it also has an award slash activity section. So the parts of my the parts of like my life that I tried to highlight in my application were my academic skills, my leadership skills, and my passions. So for academics, I showcased this through my class choice and my standardized tests. For leadership, I showed it through my leadership positions um, in clubs on campus and organizations outside of school. And for passions, um, this was definitely kind of overlapped with academics and leadership. Um, I kind of try to show my passions through my academic classes and my leadership roles. Um, something that I highly suggest before you um, start your application is to build a brand for yourself. So what I mean by that is pick two or three qualities um, of yourself that you really like and that you think that you can um, elaborate on in your application. So are you artistic? Are you a musician? You know, do you want to be an engineer? Like, why do you want to be an engineer? Are you creative? Are you a problem solver? Like stuff like that. Um, my brand was kind of, I'm really artistic, I have a passion for neuroscience, and I have a passion for social equality. So um, I'm going to get into a little more in depth about me and what I did for those three parts of my application. So for academics, I actually came into high school knowing that I wanted to go into healthcare. Originally, I wanted to go the pre-med path and become a doctor, but I'm not really sure as of now. Um, I'm kind of debating between becoming a PA, a physician assistant and a doctor. So because um, I knew that I wanted to go into healthcare, I chose mainly advanced science, math and English courses. I, I was in um, advanced English all four years of high school, same with math. And I ended up taking like AP Chem um, for my science courses. Um, for kind of like extracurriculars, I was a part of the academic talent development program at UC Berkeley. I basically took a social psychology course at UC Berkeley, it was taught by a grad student. Um, and this is actually what led to my passion for neuroscience. Um, my, the social psych class kind of introduced me to the brain and I, I realized I loved it. I loved learning about the brain and how complex it was. And um, this is what led me to kind of major in neuroscience. 
Um, for testing, I took the SAT twice. I wasn't satisfied with my score the first time I took it, so I took it another time. Um, I took subject tests, AP tests, and the PSAT. So for leadership, I'm actually the founder and secretary of I Am That Girl. Um, it's basically like a gender equity club, and I highlighted my participation in this through describing the different projects we do. So charity drives, um, fundraising, um, collaborations with different brands like Athleta and DOS. And I kind of tried to highlight um, the impact we had on women both locally and globally. Um, I was also a vice president and intern at Design Your Careers, a nonprofit. This is the leadership skills that, um, this is kind of the leadership position I tried to showcase my art skills through. So I taught um, calligraphy for them in person and online. I filmed a 11 series or 11 part series of introductory calligraphy lessons. And I was also the student facilitator for another organization called Vasavi Seva Foundation's um, annual summer camp. I was the art lead. And so I basically, um, I was a student facilitator, which meant I kind of was in charge of organizing the whole camp from scheduling the classes to budgeting, to getting the t-shirts that are on time, to kind of figuring out what snacks to give the students, um, stuff like that. And in addition to that, I was the art lead. So I kind of taught students about different art projects, different artists, and different art techniques. So my passions, I kind of already touched up on this, but this is kind of like my brand, like I did say. Um, so art, I showed this through teaching calligraphy and um, art in different occasions. Neuroscience, I showed that through ATDP and my class choices. For healthcare, I showed that through volunteering at the VA. Um, this was VA Palo Alto, which is a hospital in Palo Alto that is kind of dedicated to serving veterans. So um, I, I, I volunteered there for two summers. The first summer I was a volunteer and the second summer I was actually shadowing. Um, and then gender equity, which I showed through my um, leadership position in IATG. So I'm gonna get into like kind of general college app advice. So I have two slides about tips. Um, you know, hopefully I'll get through them all. Uh, so number one, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this before. It's kind of common advice. Um, start early and be organized. This is super important. I personally started in June. Um, the first thing I did was make a list of my colleges that I wanted to apply to. So I made a spreadsheet for that. And I also kind of had a summer timeline. So I told myself I wanted this specific essay done by August. And I kind of set deadlines for myself. So by Friday, I wanted my first draft done. By the next Friday, I wanted my second draft done, stuff like that. I think that can really help you. Um, another tip is that for the UC and Maine Common App essays, start in the summer. The reason for this is that those prompts never change. Like you can, if you have, if you do a quick Google search for the UC essay prompts and the Maine Common App essay prompts, you'll get them. And so the reason I say this is because if you start in the summer, um, these prompts are kind of given. So these are for sure going to be needed in your application anyways. But your supplemental essays, they don't stay the same every year. They, they like change depending on the year in college. And these are only released around August or September. So by that time, by the time that your supplemental essay prompts are released, if you have your UC and Common App essay prompts done, it gives you more time to focus on the supplemental essays. I'm kind of going back to my first point, make a list of the colleges you want to apply to. And in this list, make sure you have safeties, targets, and reaches. I think that this is super important and a lot of people kind of only have targets and reaches or reaches. Um, if you guys don't know what safeties, targets, and reaches mean, safeties are basically schools you are like pretty much sure you're going to get into. So how you can figure this out is you can quickly Google the um, school's name. And if they have like, they usually have a range of um, SAT scores and GPA. So if your SAT score and your GPA are above this range or higher than this range, then you pretty much have a good chance of getting in. Targets are like the same thing, except you have, I guess I would say 50-50% chance of getting in or not getting in. So if you are in between the range of their SAT and their admitted GPA, then you, it's a target school for you. And reaches are schools that you're reaching for. Um, they're schools that you're not sure if you're gonna get into. And because your GPA and your SAT score are kind of lower than their admitted range. You know, this is kind of just a, um, like a rough estimate of how to calculate this. Um, you know, nothing is ever guaranteed. So even if 
like it is a safety school for you, I wouldn't say you have a 100% chance of getting in, just a really good chance of getting in. Um, another tip for when you start writing your essays is don't let too many people read them or edit them. Um, you know, it's always great to have peer editing. It's always great to have a, like a different set of eyes to see something that you might not see. But I think that you should definitely have a limit of maybe two to three people. The reason I say this is because everyone is different. Everyone has different perspectives. Everyone has a different writing style. Your college essays are the time for your voice, your personal voice to shine through. You know, everything else in your application is, you know, statistics. It's your GPA, um, your test scores, things you can change. But your essays are really your time to kind of showcase to colleges that you're a person with different passions and different interests. And so if you let too many people read and edit your essays, your own voice kind of gets lost out. And college admissions officers can definitely tell when you're writing something or when it's like a really edited version of what your voice is. Um, another tip for like just applications is complete the CSU application as soon as possible. The CSU application opens up in I want to say October, and it is due November 30th. The reason I say um, com complete them as soon as possible is because the CSUs don't have essays. It's only statistics. So you literally just sit down and, um, you know, enter in the grades from the different classes you've taken and your SAT score or your AP score, stuff like that. And um, because it is so easy, you can literally get it done in maybe a one hour session. Um, and, you know, I think it's just a good thing for you to get it done as soon as possible because later on when your applications that have essays start getting due, you don't want this um, really like menial task to kind of stress you out, you know. So, yeah. Um, this is really important. Um, budget carefully. Applying to college is so expensive. Um, I'm sure you guys know this. Um, literally just applying to colleges, like sending your application to colleges, costs money. So for the UC schools, each application that you send um, to a school is $70. So there's nine UC um, campuses. And if you apply to all nine, you're going to be spending $630 on those applications alone. The CSU applications were actually $45 two years ago, but then they raised to $70. So it's crazy expensive now. And the common app um, applications cost anywhere from $60 to $100. Um, and not only this, you actually have to pay to send your SAT scores, your PSAT scores, your AP scores, all of that stuff to colleges as well. So, you know, those costs just add up really fast. Um, something that I actually recommend to try and limit these costs is that when you're taking a test through College Board, so the PSAT, subject test, AP test, the SAT, um, you're, you, before you take the test, like the actual test, there's like that administration like portion. Um, basically, when you're filling out your name and you're like check marking like that little box that says, oh, all of my work is my own, I'm not cheating. There's also a little box saying that you authorize College Board to give your information like your um, like your email and your phone number to different colleges. And what these colleges will do with that information is send you emails and texts about their college. Um, so number one, this is a really good way to find schools to apply to because these colleges are sending you literal information about their own college. So if you see something that catches your eye, like a certain college um, has a really great major for you, you know, and you want to apply, then that's great. You've got another college to apply to. But not only that, um, some colleges actually send you merit-based application fee waivers. So what this means is that they want you to apply. So they'll give you like a code to um, kind of override your application fee. So because I did this, I was actually able to apply to some of my safety schools, the majority of my safety schools actually, and um, some of my REACH schools for free, and this saved me a lot of money. Um, another tip I have is to keep a Google Doc or a list of all the activities you do and awards you earn throughout high school. This is just so when you sit down to actually fill out the awards and activity section of your application, you're not sitting for five hours just thinking like, oh, what did I do? What did I earn? Like, what's special about me? You know, you kind of have a list and all you have to do now is put it into fancier words that kind of make you look better. Um, so this, again, is kind of basic advice. Um, I'm sure you guys have all heard it, but I think it's really worth it to um, say again. Don't do things you think will look good on applications. Do stuff because you want to. Um, you know, college, like, 
Okay, so when I was a freshman, I actually joined the debate team and um, Science Olympiad, kind of mainly because a lot of people I knew were doing it, and I absolutely hated it. I was not good at any of it, and, um, you know, I just, I hated it, and so I stopped. Um, you know, I kind of was worried that, you know, so many people are doing it, and so when colleges see my application, they're going to be like, oh my god, she's like the only one in her school applying for a STEM major that didn't do debate or um science olympiad but don't worry about that um, when you do stuff you're passionate about not only do college admissions officers kind of see that you're unique and you're different but it makes itself evident in your essays um, i found that some of the most passionate um, topics that i was writing about that i was most passionate most passionate about um, it kind of was easier for me to write about um, that leads me into my last piece of advice it doesn't matter what you write it's how you write about it so like if you don't have anything super like impressing like i don't know like curing cancer or whatever that's completely fine you can literally write about the most mundane things if you write about it in a way that makes yourself look good like i remember when i was a junior i read this sample college essay about um this kid who literally started off his essay by saying sitting on the toilet and like he went into a story and he got into a lot of IV schools. And the reason he did was because he was able to connect his time in the bathroom to like kind of how it's shaped his worldview and how he thinks critically. And um, obviously this is a very unique take on college essays. Like how many essays are people gonna read that literally start with sitting on the toilet? Not many. So it kind of stood out to um, admissions officers and it also, it's like a fresh breath of air, you know? So um, yeah. Okay, so decision process. So this is just um, me kind of going through how I made my decision to go to Davis. So I was very fortunate to get into the majority of the schools I applied to, and I kind of narrowed it down to going to Davis or Berkeley. Um, these are kind of the things that I um, considered when making my decision. So the number one most important thing I considered was the opportunities in my intended career path, so medicine. So I considered the different type of classes, the internships available, volunteering, stuff like that. And um, with a little bit of research and talking to different students on both campuses, um, I felt that Davis would offer me more of those opportunities. Another thing that um, wasn't really a factor for me because both of my schools were UC schools, so they were pretty much the same price as cost. But if you are deciding between a private school and a public school, that's definitely something to consider because private schools range from like 60K per year to 70K per year, while public schools are 25 to like 40K. So that is a big difference. Um, something else that I considered was distance from home. I wanted to stay in California, I knew that for sure, but Berkeley is only an hour away from where I live and that was just way too close for me. Um, you know, I feel like college is definitely when you try to gain independence and being only an hour away was way too close for comfort um so davis was two and a half hours away um you know not too far but like close enough that i could come home if something bad happened or like i just needed to come home you know um this was also a really important factor in my decision the general vibe of the school um i hated berkeley's um campus and downtown area Berkeley, if you didn't know, is smack dab in the middle of a um, kind of like a downtown. So it's very busy. It's very crowded. Um, I just did not like that. Davis, however, is a lot more kind of isolated and it's definitely a college town. It's very suburban and cozy. And that's something I wanted for my school. Um, another thing that's really important is your major. So um, I applied as an NPB major at Davis. And that was one of the best things about going to Davis for me. NPB is super interesting to me. It's not just basic neuroscience. It combines a lot of other aspects too, like physiology and behavior. And I got into Berkeley for molecular and cell cellular um, biology. And that just didn't compare to neuroscience for me. So Davis also won on that. Something else that's pretty important is the population of the school or your student to teacher ratio. So this is important, again, if you're deciding between a public school and a private school. Um, do you, are you someone who values like an individualized and smaller um, class size? Like, do you want classes that are 15, that are a, a 15 people? So you have 
individual attention from your professors, or are you fine with 500 plus people in a GE class? Um, if you're fine with the 500 plus people, then you might want to go to a public school. But if you're not, then it's definitely a private school that you should go to. Um, something else is, especially when you're considering UC schools, is do you care if your school is research oriented? So if you didn't know, UC schools are basically there for research. Um, a lot of the professors are there for research first and teaching is just something that they have to do in order to conduct research. So because of that, a lot of the UC professors um, are kind of like mediocre. I don't want to say horrible because a lot of them are really great. But, you know, again, they're just teaching because they want to research. So um, a plus side of this is that if you're someone who wants to go into fields of research or someone who is interested in research, going to UC would give you so many opportunities to get into research. But you're kind of going to have to compromise on um, the greatness of your professors. So, um, you know, is that something you're willing to compromise on? Um, and the last thing is competitiveness. So Berkeley is um, definitely known, it definitely has a reputation for academic um, stress and competitiveness. And Davis doesn't have that as much, I think. They're both really great schools, but um, Berkeley is definitely known for their academic stress. So for me, um, I kind of, I want to apply to a grad school, whether that be med school or PA school. Um, in both schools, my GPA is one of the most, um, it's one of the first things that the admissions board is going to look at. So for me, it was more of a decision between, do I want to work really hard to get, um, you know, the same grades I could get at Davis that I could have, or that I could have gotten at Berkeley? Like I would have had to work probably two times or three times as hard than I will have to at Davis to get the same grades at Berkeley. And I just didn't want to risk getting a lower GPA by going to Berkeley. So, yeah. So um, if you guys came to my session, you're probably interested in pre-med or pre-health and you're probably interested in my major. So I'm just gonna go into a little bit more specifics on that. So these are kind of the things I recommend for pre-health academics. So honors chem, AP chem, physics, anatomy and physiology, AP bio, honors and AP English. I feel a lot of pre-med students forget about physics. They're more into biology and chemistry, but that's not really great because physics is actually a prereq class for um, med school and you don't want to go into college without having at least like some experience with physics you know that's setting yourself up for failure and physics is also one-fourth of the MCAT which is basically the admissions test you need to take to get into med school so it's a really important aspect of medicine as well I think and I think that's really important is um, advanced English English is a really important skill I think in a lot of science classes your reading comprehension skills and it's actually also tested on the MCAT so that's pretty important. I'd also recommend taking advanced math classes. Those are important skills you need, like math, math skills are pretty important in um, a lot of science classes. And I would also recommend taking two subject tests. So subject tests are basically like um, an hour long multiple choice question test for a certain subject. So there's like a chemistry subject test, a math subject test, stuff like that, English subject test, stuff like that, you know. And um, so some schools do require this, the UCs don't, but a lot of private schools have a requirement of two or more subject tests. So if you take these subject tests, um, it kind of opens up a lot more schools that you can apply to. The general um, rule of thumb is to take a subject test for every AP class you take because AP classes prepare you really well for the subject tests. So these are the extracurriculars I would recommend if you're trying to go into pre-health or pre-med. So the first one is Cosmos. This actually isn't um, just a pre-health thing. You can choose what topic you want to go into. Obviously, if you want to go into health or medicine, you would choose like um, a biology or chemistry course. And it's a residential six-week program at various UC campuses. So I know that UC Irvine has one. I know that I think LA has one. Um, I would, I'd look that up. Um, so basically, you take some classes for the first few weeks, and then I think you do a research project, um, or you do something at the end of those six weeks. I haven't gone to this program. I just know about it. So um, I would do some more research if you guys are interested in that. Another program is SIMR, which stands for the Stanford Institute of Medical Research Program. And um, this is actually a free medical research program at Stanford throughout a summer. There is an age restriction. I think you have to be a rising junior or a rising senior. Um, this is a really prestigious and competitive program. 
Um, number one, because it's free, and number two, because it's at Stanford. The acceptance rate for this program is actually lower than the acceptance rate for Stanford University, I think. So um, it's really competitive, but you got, you know, like just apply, you guys never know what's gonna happen. Um, if you do get in, this is really great opportunity for you. And um, yeah, like Angela said, um, they don't only accept low income students, they do give preference to minorities in medicine and low income students. So um, if you are one of those two categories, you do have higher chances of getting in. Um, the last thing, the last like program is called the Academic Talent Development Program, which is what I did at UC Berkeley. And it's usually like a six or eight week class taught by a grad student at Berkeley and it's non-residential. This is a great experience for me and, um, you know, I highly suggest it to any of you guys. And the last thing with volunteering in hospitals, this is something that I think basically every pre-med or pre-health student does. It's really easy to do. Almost all hospitals have um, positions open. And um, some hospitals like Kaiser do have a age requirement, like 16 plus, but other hospitals like VA Paul Alto don't. So. so these are some resources that I use when applying to college. Um, and even before that, actually. So YouTube is great. There's so many different um, YouTubers out there who have advice for you guys. Some one channel that I especially love is Super Cheer TV. She kind of covers all of the um, different aspects of college application. So she has a bunch of videos on essays and kind of cliche topics to write essays, some advice for essays. And she also covers kind of like lawsuits or stuff that are happening like not just academically or like application wise so she she has a video dedicated to kind of the changes you can expect um, for a lot of the college application process um, due to corona so that she's a really great um, resource to use if you're trying to get up to date with like different changes and stuff with the SAT I know that the UCs are no longer requiring um, SAT scores or whatever so she's pretty great she has some she has a lot of useful videos something else that I would recommend is Khan Academy and they have this amazing free SAT practice kind of like um, program going on they, they collaborated with College Board on this actually so my sophomore Year summer, I took a um, SAT prep course, and then after that was finished, I took my first SAT. I wasn't happy with that score, so be between my first SAT and my second SAT, I did Khan Academy every day for 30 minutes, and I really think that I owe my um, second SAT score to Khan Academy. It really helped me. Um, the third resource would be College Board. College Board not only has this thing called Big Future, where you can kind of um, look up different careers and different colleges, they also have scholarships available. So this is especially important when you're going into your junior year. Um, so if you do a bunch of basic college tasks through College Board, you're eligible for scholarships. So for a $500 scholarship, or like the chance to get a $500 scholarship, you can um, build a college list of five or more colleges. And if you do, um, like I think, I think it's eight or 10 of these like little um, requirements, then you are um, entered for a chance of getting a $40,000 scholarship. So it's a pretty cool um, thing for juniors. And um, the final resource would be Miss Sun. She's like a blog kind of website. Um, she has really useful posts. She talks about all different types of schools and something that I really liked of hers was her article on um, what different UC campuses look for. So if you guys didn't know, each UC campus has their own type of values and requirements they look for in students. So UCLA is very um, academics based and so is Berkeley, but Berkeley also places a um, kind of emphasis on social awareness and social justice. So they, they like look for that in their students. Um, and she has that for all the nine UC schools. So, yeah. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions or want me to elaborate on anything I, I covered, um, my email is pranavi.g.m at gmail.com and my Instagram is underscore pranavi.m. So you can shoot me an email or a DM and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And um, we can open up the floor for Q&A now. I think we already have two questions. So yeah. did you apply? We have a couple questions. So I'm just going to stop my share so it makes it easier for you to see the questions. Okay. 
Um, so from Rajvi, did you apply for any scholarships? And if so, which ones? So I didn't apply for any scholarships my junior year, and that's honestly a really big regret of mine. I did apply for the college board ones like I talked about. But um, my senior year, when I was when I was looking through scholarships, I realized that a lot of the full ride scholarships that pay all of your tuition for all four years are mainly open to juniors. So if you're a junior right now, I really recommend um, kind of looking up full ride scholarships because a lot of the full ride scholarships I found as a senior were only open to juniors. So one of these is called um, the Cameron Impact Scholarship. And um, there's just like so many out there. So if you're a junior, definitely take advantage of that. Um, I did apply to some scholarships. Um, they weren't any big ones. They were like $1,000 each or like $500 each. I'm not sure if I got any, and I honestly don't remember the names. Um, they were from like different, um, like a lot of them were from law firms. Law firms, for some reason, give a lot of scholarships out from like $1,000 to $2,000. You just have to submit an essay and your resume and a transcript, and then you're kind of considered for it. Um, I would honestly just search up scholarship lists on Google and there's also a lot of different web services that provide you with a list of them. Some of them are called FastWeb, Scholarship Owl, um, Unigo, um, spelled U-N-I-G-O. And if you just enter in a few details about yourself, like your gender, your um, major or your interested career path, um, your grade, they'll give you a customized list of scholarship opportunities. Um. I actually have a question for mm -hmm. you. Um, did you like, okay, I don't know. Did you apply to like any other schools that you got into? And did you apply to like any private schools? And like, yeah. what? so I applied to a lot of schools. I applied to um, in total 26. Oh, wow. I, <laughs> my dad wanted me to apply to 20. And at one point I got a lot of like um, different, like I talked about like the merit-based um, fee waivers. So I was just like, at this point, I have all of my supplementals written and I have fee waivers, so why not apply to more? So a school that was a private school that I got into was actually called Seton Hall. It's in New Jersey. And I got into their BSMD program. If you guys don't know what a BSMD program is, it's like a combined undergraduate and medical school program. So you're basically guaranteed admission into their medical school. Um, I, I didn't like um, commit to them because number one, they were in New Jersey. I didn't want to go there. Um, number two, they were a private school. And although I did get a lot of scholarship money from them, um, it just wasn't cheaper than a UC. And number three, um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do medical school. Like I said, I'm kind of on, I'm kind of on the edge between PA school and medical school. So if I go there, it is a commitment for eight years to stay in New Jersey because four years from my undergrad and four years from medical school. So it just wasn't worth it to me. Um, some other schools that I, the, the mostly, okay, so the private schools I applied to were mostly my safety schools. Um, so some others from the top of my head were the University of Redlands, University of the Pacific, um, schools like that. And some of my reaches were Tulane, um, Wash U in St. Louis, and Pomona College. Cool. So how did you come up with your college like list? Like how did you figure out which ones that you wanted to apply to? So um, I definitely knew that I wanted to um, end up at a UC school. So I applied to all the UC campuses. Um, I definitely applied to some CSUs for safety. And for my private schools, like um, my safety, my target my reaches, I used websites like College Simply and um, Big Future, um, College Confidential, um, stuff like that. If you, they have like parameters, so you can say, I'm looking for an all girls school. I'm looking for a public school. Mm. I'm looking for schools in California or certain other states. And they'll give you a list of colleges based on that. Oh, okay, cool. Um, any other questions? Um, I applied to 26. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Um, I don't regret applying to that many, but the thing why I was um, able to apply to so many was because of, like I mentioned, my fee waivers. If I hadn't gotten my fee waivers, I would have definitely not applied to that many because, like, again, application costs are crazy. The only reason I applied to so many was because I was able to do so for free. Um, who did you look or who did you get to look over your essays? So I have a really good friend um, um, whose writing style is kind of similar to mine. And so I kind of depended on her for peer advising. And I also had this like free college, um, college like uh, counseling service through my dad's office or like my dad's work. So it's called, um, I'm so sorry, I don't know what it's, I forgot what it's called, but um, I basically just sent them drafts of my essays and they would send it back in a week or so with edits. And um, I also went to C2. Um, so my junior year, I went to C2 for tutoring with AP Chem and Calculus. And um, I had some hours left over from them. So I used those hours my senior year to get my essays edited. Um, how do you know which scholarships are legit? So, okay, I guess my rule of thumb is that no scholarship will ask you to um, give you give them your personal information. So obviously if they ask you for like your social security number or like your credit card info, you know, that's obviously not legit. Um, for, I guess one way to check is to go to the website of the um, people who are offering the scholarship and to see if they have a page of past scholarship winners. If they do and they have pictures and where the, where the person is going to school, then it's pretty much legit. Um, but, you know, avoid scholarships where they ask for too much of your personal information. Yeah, no problem. I'm going back to Rajvi's question about did you apply for any scholarships? So I forgot to mention this, but a lot of the times with your private school applications and your UC applications, your application itself is applying to a lot of scholarships that the schools already offer. So with public schools like UC and the CSUs, it's really hard to get merit-based scholarships. But... Um, with private schools, because they are so much more expensive, they're a lot more generous with their scholarship money. So um, a lot of the schools that I applied to that were private schools um, offered me scholarship money and a lot of it. But in the end, um, like even with that much money, um, it still wasn't cheaper than a UC. So it just, I don't know, it didn't matter to me. Yeah, so um, Rajvi's question is, could you repeat the application fee discount code thing you were talking about early, earlier? So when you're taking a um, test through College Board, so like the SAT, the PSAT, subject tests, AP tests, before you take the actual test, um, I'm sure you guys, if you have taken it, you guys remember this, but there's like an administration portion. So like you're, you just basically bubble in your name, I think, and you write your name too, and you like copy a statement saying like, oh, all of my work is my own. I'm not cheating off of anyone. There's also, when you're doing that section, there's also an option to mark a box that says I, um, like I will allow College Board to give my information to the student, um, to the student search. It's called something. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but student something. And basically what this allows College Board to do is to give your email address and, and sometimes your phone number to different colleges. And so what these colleges will do is send like um, promotion emails to your um, account, to your Gmail. So um, they'll send you like stuff like, oh, our application is open starting in 10 days or whatever, like stuff, reminders like that. And they also send you information about their majors, about financial aid, stuff like that. And sometimes some schools will send you like, oh, if you apply to our school, um, I'll give you a fee waiver so you don't have to pay. And um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Um, any other questions? Um, so, um, I definitely think my involvement with my club, I'm That Girl, helped me stand out. Um, I'm someone who's really passionate about gender equality and equity. 
And I think that made itself clear when I was writing my essays. Um, you know, this club wasn't something I founded for college applications. I think it made itself really clear through my application and my description of my activities. Um, um, I'm really passionate about that. And I think that my passion made itself clear for that. Something else that um, I think helped me stand out was um, ACDP at UC Berkeley. Um, I, it's not a really competitive program. Like I think it's not as competitive as Simmer or Cosmos for sure. But I talked about a research project I had to do um, as my final. I had to create a research project. I had to make a thesis paper and a presentation. And I basically talked about that in my essay and how that led me to um, kind of have a passion for the brain and neuroscience. So I think talking about having extracurriculars that I directly link to my passions and my career goals definitely helped me stood out. Um, do you have any study tips? Yeah, so I think my main one would be kind of figuring out what type of learner you are. Um, like, are you a visual learner? Are you an auditory learner? Like, what type of learner are you? Once you figure that out, there's specific things that you can do to help yourself. So um, I'm actually not sure what type of learner I am, but <laughs> for AP Chem, what I did was that, I think this helped, this tip really helped me um, with getting A's both semesters and five on the AP test, is that after every chapter, I um, kind of wrote a Google document um, of like kind of like a summary on the most important details and the formulas that were in the chapter. Um, so when it came to the AP test in the finals, I kind of already had a comprehensive study guide and typing these things out also helped um, like those formulas to sit in my brain. Like I'm sure you guys have heard this. If you write something down five times, it's like equivalent to saying it like 10 times or something like it helps your memory. So that's definitely a study tip. And something else I would recommend is if you work better with people, find your study buddy. I had a study buddy for Ken and she really helped me through things. And I'd like to think that I helped her through things too. Um, it was it was really helpful. Like we, I think everyone has a different understanding of different subjects. Everyone has different natural strengths and weaknesses. And if you have someone to help you through things, it's beneficial for both of you. Um, productivity tips. So. Um, probably the Pomodoro method. Um, it's basically when you study for, I think, a certain amount of time and then you take like, I think, five or 10 minute break. Um, I think this is a lot more effective than cramming or like doing an all nighter because your brain just cannot, um, it just doesn't have the attention span to kind of study for like hours on end. So taking a break would definitely help. And from Rajvi, um, how do you plan on finding your dorm mates? So I was really lucky um, this year, um, a lot of uh, Milpitas High School seniors ended up going to Davis. Like I think 30 or 33 people went to Davis. And so I had some good friends who were going to Davis. And so um, I just, we, we, we became dorm mates. Unfortunately, um, I'm not gonna be housing this fall. Um, corona is kind of ruining all my <laughs> senior year and college freshman plans. So yeah, I don't have dorm mates anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, like Angela said, there are like um, platforms and different social medias for um, the incoming freshmen. So there's a Facebook page for the Davis class of 2024 and there's also an Instagram page. So you can basically send in a picture of yourself with a little description. And then you can also say that, oh, I'm looking for um, um, roommates or I'm looking for friends. Um, usually your school will also have a housing application in which you can fill out a survey with your kind of preferences. So are you a, like an early bird, are you a morning person or a night person? Are you messy or clean? And if you answer like a few of these questions, it'll match you up with people who have similar um, preferences and you can kind of reach out to them via that. Yeah, like Nishi said, um, there's also a loop chat. Loop chat is kind of like messenger or WhatsApp. I, I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of like um, a messages kind of thing. And um, I think for each college, there's a different kind of um, code that you can enter in and it'll put you into this group. And for Davis, there's a bunch of different groups. So like there's the Davis networking, there's the Davis girls, um, uh, there's like Davis girls rooming 
kind of thing. So people who want who, people who are girls or identify as girls and want to identify with uh, or room with other girls can um, join that group chat and then send out a little bio of themselves and say, I'm looking for roommates. And then you can kind of chat with that person individually if you like them. So, yeah. And like Nishi said, there's also some for different um, colleges and majors as well. Okay, so that is super, that's super cool. Does anybody have any last minute questions? I think most of them have been answered. Yeah. Okay, um, okay, so then we can just wrap up real mm -hmm. quick. Um, so thank you, Pranavi, for so, uh, for volunteering to speak. It was really helpful, um, especially for, like, a person like me who's, like, debating about going into the health sciences. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for taking the time to do this. And, yeah, there's so many thank yous in the chat, too. <laughs> you guys are welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, awesome. So, okay. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say? Any last? Um, not really, but if you guys do have any other questions or like, or if you guys want advice, um, my email, like I told you guys my email, um, it was pranavi.g.m at gmail.com or you can send me a DM to my Instagram underscore pranavi.m underscore. So yeah, feel free to do that. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you so much. See you guys. I believe. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thanks.